Um, thanks very much and good afternoon. It's an absolute pleasure to be here at Wired. I'm just sorry that we're not um, live with an audience, but I'm still very um, proud to be here. Um, I'm Mark Slack. I'm the one of the co-founders of um, CMR Surgical. Um, previously was head of gynecology here at Cambridge University. It's time to get rid of the scars. Why MAS and the CMR mission? Basically, we want to bring minimal access surgery um, to everybody. The benefits are compelling. Um, millions of people in the world on getting minimal access surgery, and we exist, we believe, to bring the benefits of minimal access surgery via robotics to all the people that need it. We are a relatively young company. Um, five of us started it back in 2014, um, and we've accelerated rapidly to become one of the UK's um, latest unicorns. Um, with um, a large staff of over 500 people um, working um, with us. Is keyhole surgery... We're not getting any movement, Josh. Is keyhole surgery actually better than open surgery? Um, there are huge advantages for keyhole surgery. Things like surgical site infections. If you have a large wound, about 50% of those patients will go back to, to hospital. If you have a um, small minimal access wound, almost none will go back. If you have a large wound, about a fifth of patients will require to go back into theatre if they get a wound infection. Herniation and in fact overall roughly 50% of complications are reduced uh, by having keyhole surgery uh, rather than open. So why do only a majority, minority get it? If so, why? If we look at the figures in America, roughly less than 50% of people actually get minimal access surgery. In some areas, it's as low as 20 or 30%, and really the vast majority of people in the world, despite all these advantages, are still getting open surgery. Why is it the case? Well, keyhole surgery is difficult. It's like trying to tap your head and rub your um, chest at the same time. It's technically a challenge. After many years of training minimal access surgeons, I've realized that a lot of people struggle to actually master the finer arts for advanced surgery. So the next question comes is, could robotics overcome this? So robotic surgery with specially articulated um, wristed instruments, um, could they actually make it better? Well, robots have been around for a quite a long time, and yet still only about five to 7% of all surgeries in minimal access are done robotically. So we ask surgeons, what, what, what do you want if you wanted a robot to make it better? And they said they wanted a robot for all surgical disciplines. They wanted it to be equivalent cost to straight stick, high usage, small, adaptable to any theater, modular, and quick to set up and take down. Well, that's a problem. What do we do about it? There was nothing like it. So what did we do? We had to build our own robot. Basically, we wanted to model it on the human arm so that you had a lovely arm and you had the wrist and all the advantages that you would get when operating in a theater. So we started with modest um, beginnings, um, which was our, our um, wooden robot arm, and then progressed finally to Versius. Slide, please, Josh. And um, I have a video here of Versius as it's working, and I'll tell you a little bit about it while it shows. The video, please. Do we have a video? Right, so this is Versius. So you'll notice that it is a, it's got multiple um, parts. It's got multiple arms. These are all separate one from each other. Because of this, we're able to position the ports in the normal position that a minimal access surgeon would uh, place their ports. It's got small instruments uh, with fully articulation, giving seven degrees of freedom around the um, movement, able to do things that one couldn't do with straight stick laparoscopy and um, almost more than one can do with one's own hands. So going back into the um, normal ports that one would use in surgery. 
you can see here that the port placement is identical to what one would expect. Inside, we have 3D vision, giving enhanced visualization and enabling the surgeon to do more advanced and trickier procedures. The surgeon in this particular frame is standing and you can see he has total vision of what's going on at the operating table and can communicate easily with the people around the table. Ergonomically very beneficial to the surgeon who could also choose to sit as well. And hopefully this will help us and transform the surgery for good. Next slide. So is a robot enough on its own to actually improve surgery? Well, actually, there are quite a lot of issues in surgery that need resolving today. There are thousands of patients um, harmed annually by poor surgery. 50% of surgical complications could be reduced by simple adherence to standardized care. So the robot, by making it minimal access surgery, will reduce complications by about 50%. And then if we could standardize surgery, we reduce it further. But surgery needs better tools to help us do this. And these include both devices, such as our robot, which is merely a tool, and digital solutions. Next row. What is the ultimate goal in digital and data in healthcare? Well, the ultimate goal is to improve patient outcomes. That's what we're here for. Next slide. There's a huge amount of hype in healthcare at the moment. Um, we hear terms, AI, deep learning, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And while a lot of these things are good, we exist in medicine. You cannot get around specificity and sensitivity. We want to know that whatever we're adopting is good. What we want to do is deliver tangible, actionable, and cost-effective benefits that can make the greatest impact for the patient now, not just in years to come. Although we do keep our eye on the years to come so that we can actually have um, something um, new coming all the time. Next slide. How do we bring the real benefits today? Next slide. It starts with the robot. Well, the great thing about the robot is the robot creates a digital interface. It creates continually measuring telemetry. Every movement of the arm, every movement of the instrument is collected in telemetry and sent up to a cloud. This gives us a whole new set of data. And unless you have the robot in the middle, you're losing a huge amount of meaningful data. This gives us the ability to look at the surgeon's hand movements. We already have data that shows us that we can discriminate between a novice user and an expert user. We can use it to identify surgeons who've picked up bad habits and are maybe um, excessively using certain aspects of the robot and therefore could um, adopt practice that would be better for the patient. We are also enabled to look at our telemetry and compare it with other digital data that we have, like our database, which enables us to integrate all this and actually plan for better outcomes. Next slide, please. And what you end up with is an ecosystem. The patient is at the middle. Immediately underneath it, we have the device, and that's our robot. Um, then we have all the instruments, and we have the training. We, underneath that, of course, we support this with excellent education and educational tools. And underneath that, we have a digital and a data strategy, which I'll tell you about in a second. Next slide. And what can we do here? Well, we've got improved training. We have a um, simulator, which enables the surgeons to train to proficiency, not on a patient. My Versius is an app which has got videos and the data that the patient's collecting on their patients, digitally recording the cases, the outcomes. That enables them to keep a digital logbook and enables them to benchmark themselves against best practice. It also means surgeons, if they get slightly bad results, can easily get back on track because they can bring in people to help them and see why their results have deteriorated. Next slide. And that, of course, also brings enormous benefits for the hospitals as well. It gives insights into the use of the system. We can do predictive maintenance in the system and therefore reduce downtime of this very expensive asset. Uh, it improves inventory management helps the surgeons adopt best practice because they can compare their data against the data of other surgeons who are using the system and uploading it to the crowd as well. We believe that using this and using data and digital, we can actually reach proficiency faster and better and ultimately um, provide a better service for everybody in the hospital and um, with our robot. Thanks, patient. Thank I must say that over the next five years, I do believe you're going to see an enormous acceleration of robotic surgery to the point where I believe that robotic surgery will take over um, completely from manual laparoscopic procedures. So where are we now? 
We have done um, more than 800 procedures in patients um, in multiple sites around the world. Um, we are incredibly proud um, that we've managed to get the hospital purchased by the NHS. We see the NHS as one of the, the benchmarks of standard in international uh, medicine, also one that believes very strongly in value-based uh, healthcare. And um, we've had this, um, our system adopted in multiple um, hospitals um, in the United K Kingdom within the health service. We also have um, systems in Europe and in India. We keep um, a database in every single case that we do and now have more than 800 procedures on our database, which we are analyzing at the moment for publication. And we've also followed a very mature process of um, innovation and publication. We've published all our um, preclinical work done on cadavers, um, which we did more than 300. And we've also published um, all the um, intermediate work and now our clinical work as well. And we are loosely following the ideal collaboration in order to show that we are introducing our system in an efficient, but more importantly, an, um, an ethical way. The big question I get asked is why Cambridge? Next slide. We're a tiny little company. There's only 500 of us, and we are up against some of the biggest healthcare providers in the world. And people ask, how can we compete with the competition? So I have to say to myself, well, why Cambridge? Why Cambridge United Kingdom? Um, what could we do against um, these big companies? Well, I had to look at our history in Cambridge and what we've done before. So on the campus of our hospital is the Laboratory for Molecular Biology, where there are 13 Nobel laureates. Just down the road is the Cavendish Laboratories, um, who have 29 Nobel Prizes. But what have we done and we've actually brought to the market um, from Cambridge? Well, we discovered the electron, the neutron, um, nuclear fission, um, the jet engine, um, the double helix, IVF, and iris recognition, and of course, embryonic stem cells. But we're not just a scientific area. We also brought in the rules of football, um, something really important to most of scientists, the thermos flask, and don't forget the cat flap. So we'd like to believe that we've done a lot of things in Cambridge before. We hope that our robot will be a major player in the future. We believe that the future is robotic surgery, which will enable more patients to get minimal access surgery with all the benefits that minimal access surgery brings, such as a reduction of complications at 50%, and therefore generally improve the healthcare um, and the health economics for the patients. Um, thank you again so much for having me here this afternoon.